investigation ever conduct conducted? Congressman, if you will, we will get back to you with full details. Are you refusing to answer? Is that... Congressman, I will have to check on that for you. We've had a better response from Blackwater than we have from the State Department on getting information. It's a question of, of when things go wrong, where is the accountability? When the FBI tried to investigate, the State Department blocked the investigation. Now, when the state starts to protect its own murderers, a very dangerous corner has been turned. I asked your Secretary of Defense a couple months ago what law governs their actions. Uh, Mr. I was going to ask him. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Help. Well, I was Blackwater is this horrific stealth threat to me because I have read history and I know what you can do even in a functioning democracy with a handful of paramilitary terrorizing people. For example, Mussolini, always the great innovator, started to bring Italy to its knees by using black shirts. He called them Arditi. They were veterans returning from the war, and he would send them in a targeted way, go beat up that newspaper editor, go beat up this politician. And it's intimidating. And finally, there were scenes of when actual parliamentarians were getting threatened by these black shirts, they started to cave. And this prepared the way for Mussolini to triumph. And so, of course, Hitler knew something that worked when he saw it, so he deployed the brown shirts. So why is a paramilitary force so alarming? Why do we have the Fourth Amendment? The founders knew what it does to ordinary citizens to have a standing army that is directed not by the people, not accountable to the people. They made sure that the National Guard, our militias, are answerable to the people. That's why they made sure that there's posse comitatus, which means that the, the police are a, a domestic force, a civilian force, that we don't have a, a military occupation of our streets, okay? And that's one of the things that makes the United States different from countries all over the world where they know the state can break in. Blackwater Worldwide's high-risk warrant hostage rescue course is designed to teach proven tactics on the most common situations. Many of us don't know that Blackwater is already operating in the United States. In New Orleans, in the wake of Hurricane Katrina, Jeremy Scahill reports that there were, were contractors shooting at civilians in Katrina. I was in New Orleans in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina, and I saw Blackwater mercenaries speeding up and down the streets in unmarked cars, heavily armed with M4 machine guns, flak jackets, other weapons strapped to their legs. The nation's largest private security company may build a world-class training facility in Kootenai County. The Idaho Post Academy has signed a letter of intent to work with Blackwater if the company decides to build in the region. We feel Blackwater's reputation will hurt Idaho's reputation. This is the thing that keeps me awake nights out of all these steps. When I travel, people in, I'm in Chicago, people say, oh yeah, Blackwater just established a beachhead in Illinois at the mouth of the Mississippi River. I'm in Southern California. People in San Diego are like, yeah, we're just fighting this really hard fight because Blackwater wants to establish a presence along the border, getting into border control. And their business plan calls for them to be increasingly active, monitoring protests. Their website has a focus on Midtown Manhattan. A paramilitary force. You can't close down an open society without one. We've got a crisis. We're at war. The enemy is plotting to attack us. This proposal will allow us to gather intelligence information on that enemy that we otherwise would not get. Another sign of a closing society is when government starts to surveil ordinary citizens. Mussolini pioneered this. Hitler set up neighborhood spies, East Germany developed the Stasi, and China today has the Dangan system. You need a surveillance apparatus to close an open society. Most of us know that our emails can be read and our phone calls can be listened into. But most people, I would have to say quite naively, think, well, if I'm not doing anything wrong, why does it matter? 
All you have to do is read history to know that in a closing society, you don't have to have done anything wrong. If there's a surveillance apparatus, they can listen in, and they, as other institutions erode, they can simply say you've done something wrong or use leverage through the surveillance to intimidate you. The Stasi, the secret police of East Germany, kept everyone in a state of fear and silence. For years, everyone thought they had a Stasi file on them. After the wall came down, it turned out that only 10% of people actually had a file on them. But all it takes is to know you're under surveillance to keep you scared and frightened. So this is one of the steps that I have a, a very personal relationship to and I have a lot of feelings about it um, for the following reason. For a year and a half, every time I would try to take a plane, I would get my boarding pass and it would have a quadruple S high security threat mark on it. And they would take me out of the line and do that whole extra security check thing. And I kept asking, what's up with this? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? And finally, this nice young TSA agent said, oh, you're on the list. And I'm like, the list? I'm on the list? How was Nazi Germany able to round up so many Jews so quickly? Because they had mechanized the list. Again, how did Pinochet manage to round up mass arrests? Mass arrests are always a hallmark of a closing society. Thousands, tens of thousands of people in a notorious soccer stadium. The list. Every closing society keeps a list. So I researched it, and it turns out that I was in very good company. As of July of 2008, there are over 1 million Americans on the watch list. 20,000 names get added each month. 1 million entries. Now, there can't possibly be a million terrorists in the United States. We know, for example, there are lots of famous people on that list, don't belong in there, Senator Edward Kennedy, Nelson Mandela, peace activists, nuns, lots of people on the list. After doing some research, I discovered that I was in very good company. Many innocent, outspoken U.S. citizens are on the watch list. We understand that a new member is on the watch list, Drew Griffin of CNN. How did I get on this list? Well, the TSA is adamant it's not even me, even though it is me getting stopped at the airports. And my question is, why would Drew Griffin's name come on the watch list post his investigation of TSA. What is the basis of this sudden recognition that Drew Griffin is a terrorist? What a curious and interesting and troubling phenomenon. David Antoon, highly decorated Vietnam War veteran, served his country bravely, criticized the Iraq War. I mean, you can take WMDs and the Gulf of Tonkin, and you could see the manipulation of, of information to bring the American public into accepting and approving of a, of a war that really had no basis. So I started writing about that. It wasn't long thereafter I noticed that every time I would purchase a ticket and board a flight, I would uh, receive boarding passes with four S's on them every time I travel every time my children travel, every time my wife travels. Um, every time my 86-year-old mother travels.